I think you guys are trying to paint this with a black and white brush, and it's not that simple. Get, get her out of here! If I did that... It's called... Come on! Oh! YouTube took down or demonetized this AMP video, and I'm not surprised. This latest AMP video was set up around a bunch of different people debating interesting topics. Everything from should men pay 100% of bills, would a man be wrong to miss a child's birth, and of course, who can say the N-word amongst other topics. It's a shame that this video didn't make it on YouTube because I thought there was some really great discussions and interesting viewpoints in there. But at times, it did get a little chaotic and they definitely could have used a moderator or a mute button at certain moments. But still a great concept and video that I ended up watching over on Twitter. But I'm Jew. Welcome to the channel. Please like and share the video. Don't forget to sub. Now, let's get into it. AMP says, if you must choose between visiting your best friend as he is dying or your child being born, you should choose visiting your best friend. There's two ways you can look at it. You know how many kids you have. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the wife come first. That best friend can wait. He's dying. I know, I know, but... So the, so the best friend can't wait, because that's it. He's he going to die. He's going to die. But you also have one chance to see your child being born, so the wife and the baby come first. All right, look. I met I met five amazing guys in my life, and if one of them in the ICU when they're dying, I, I gotta go see. Them. I, I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real. Honestly, the rest, I got you. And my son, my daughter, I can see him on video, man. <laughs> All right, but the next day I'll be with my kids. Yeah, I think this is an age life experience type of thing where you think different when you're younger. I have best friends from college and high school, and I have kids, and I haven't missed any of their births, and I wouldn't miss any of their births for anything. If any of my best friends, God forbid, were on their deathbed at the same time that my child was being born, I'm gonna go see my child. And those friends are gonna understand because they wouldn't want me to miss the birth of my child. And vice versa, like if I'm on my deathbed and I have a best friend who has a child being born at the same time, then he needs to go see his child. I wouldn't even want him in that room with me. Like go take care of your family. My family is gonna be here with me. But again, from life experience and where these guys are in their lives, they're from 22, 23, all the way to 30. They're millionaires, they live together. They basically do everything thing together. So their life experience is much different than the normal person's. A normal person probably is not going to live with their best friends past a certain age. Even if they're single, they're going to go rent or buy their own place and not just live with their friends all the way into their 30s. So for Chris to be saying this, he's young, he has no kids. The closest people in his life is that group of friends he has. You can understand where he's coming from. But I think for most people that either had kids young or have kids in their 30s, they are going to be at their kid's birth over a friend dying. Now, if the question was if a relative was dying, like your mother or a sibling, would you be there or with your kid's birth? I think that's more of a divisive question than a friend's death and a kid's birth. Okay, so I mean, the main thing is I can tell you don't have children, correct? Nah, 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 no, yeah, no, nah, Okay, yeah. so like she said, it's only one time you get that event. Based on what type of best friend you got, where I'm from, Chicago, one of my partners could have got in this up. And if my wife, my beautiful wife over there giving birth to one of my kids, and you know, I just told you, hey, shit, water just broke. I'm gonna be honest, I might not f with my son. If I miss my man's dying. <laughs> but you were young though, so That's I can give you that perspective. I really do appreciate these discussions and I'm glad they had older people on there because there's just a huge difference in the way people view things and how they prioritize based on their age, maturity, and life experience. Well, I believe the wives come first. It's a lot of women dying of birth these days. So if you have the opportunity, I believe you should go see your child. I see both sides, but I think we all looking at it from an aspect of absolute deal. Listen, I'm speaking from a perspective of being married for 23 years. I have four. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. Having four best friends for close to 50 years. Damn. My best friends and I will all agree that if it came down to it, to the birth of our child and their death, there's no way I'm turning my back on my wife for giving birth. I love these guys to death. But when it comes to the birth of my, 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 my child, I wish you the best. I'll pray for you. Yeah, I don't think any man on his deathbed would even want his friend in the room with him prioritizing him over being with his kid that's being born. I think that's just such a special moment that no self-respecting man would even want to be prioritized over a baby being born. AMP says, your girl should not attend her ex's funeral. What's going on, man? I feel like she could go. Like, he dead. What? He ain't nothing he can do. She can't talk to him. They can't get back together. They, he, I'm just going to, going to show my respect. Like, now, you know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> no, unless your ex is your baby mom's or baby father, uh, then that's then that's like, yeah. now nah, I'm coming, I'm just going with <laughs> Everybody's different. I wouldn't mind my significant other going to their ex's funeral. Now, I don't want my girl to get on stage and be making speeches and breaking down crying and talking about the history and the past that they had together. That's a line too far. Like you're not doing Instagram posts and digging up old pictures for stories or anything like that. But just attending a funeral paying respect, I don't really see a big issue with that. Yo, these these topics are funny. AMP says you should pay for your girl's BBL. I'm not okay. paying. I don't want to pay for my girl for the BBL. You cheat, bro. Yeah, this is not the first time I done heard you say some shit like that, though. That you're not paying for shit. It's my girlfriend, right? Yeah. Meaning that I fell in love with her for her. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. So look, hold on. Therefore, okay. if she if she comes to me and say, babe, I want a, I want a BBL. I'm gonna say you don't need that. And 90, I ain't gonna lie, bro. 90% of the times, 99, okay. when a girl get a BBL. It's gonna track attention, bro. She's coming to you not for you to persuade her otherwise, like that she shouldn't get it. She's saying, babe, I want a BBL. I'ma say, I don't want you to have a BBL. Bro, buy the BBL, bro. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. People get like cosmetic shit, boost their own personal self-esteem and shit, how they feel about themselves. Veneers. BBL, yeah, all that shit is included because yeah, like yeah, veneers, veneers and shit like that. Okay. Yeah, but it's the same thing though. Like people get veneers because no, they don't like they yeah. smile, and and it's affecting their self esteem. I agree with Duke on this one. If your significant other, your girl is coming to you saying, "I want to do this," not asking your opinion or anything like that, but this is something I want to do. Can you help me with it? I don't see the problem in helping with it if you got it. If y'all are locked in, you know that that's not about nothing other than what she wants to do for herself. I addressed the whole BBL thing in a whole other video. I I don't think it's a problem if. A person wants to do that for themselves and you can help them financially in that situation. If I'm here and your boyfriend, it is my job to make you feel beautiful as, as how you are. Jake, I ain't gonna lie, I have a big forehead. Me too. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Me, too. Look, look, look. Babe, Me too. Look, babe, I wanna go to Turkey and I wanna reduce my forehead. She may not, like, she gonna be like, Oh no, like I love you for your, like, I love you. Supposed to say yeah. okay, okay. When you get a That's BBO, not permanent. there's upkeep, right? Yeah, yeah. so now she has area. to keep it up. This is ongoing right. expenses due to most likely on average an insecurity she's dealing with. I don't know what they're talking about. There is no upkeep with a BBL other than eating right, working out and taking care of yourself. It's not like you got to keep going back for multiple surgeries or get oil changes. It's not carb maintenance. So I don't know what agent is talking about. There is no upkeep with BBLs other than taking care of yourself. Only black people should be able to say the N word. I think this is an interesting topic for them to talk about, especially considering with the whole Ray thing where he said his biggest struggle streaming is not being able to say the N word, especially because he's under that A&P umbrella. I'm from Miami, right? Okay. Yeah. So Hispanics and blacks are deep down uh, in all the poor neighborhoods. They got mouth full of gold just like us. Uh, they talk like us. Uh, that's all they know. Now, if they might go to y'all states and city and y'all not cool with that, they might get flipped. You say the Cubans grew up with y'all, right? They leave Miami and go, go to the A. Somebody checked them about saying, What's their excuse? They might get flipped. You know what I'm saying though? But it, it's wrong now. I love the word. I kind of addressed my stance on the whole N-word thing. Who I think can say it and why in the whole Ray video. Being streamer, being an Asian, being like right beside black streamer, bro, it's so hard to not to say the N-word, bro. Like, bro, imagine saying, imagine saying the N-word, and your whole career is gone, bro. Let's address all of that. Unless your ancestors were kidnapped from their homes and taken away from their families, put in shackles and chains, forced on slave ships, stacked on top of one another in horribly agonizing living conditions, suffering from fear, sickness, disease, starvation, and dehydration for six to eight weeks on dank ships as they cross the Atlantic Ocean, only to be unloaded like cargo on a foreign land, unable to understand the language, and a lot of times not even communicate with one another before being inspected like cattle and ultimately auctioned off often to brutal slave owners to be used as farm equipment then no you cannot say the n-word unless your ancestors were taking the plantations against their will beaten lashed 
and forced to work 16 hours a day, six days a week, and scorching hot fields picking cotton, given little to no water or rest and fed slop, which was basically whatever was left over from the slave master's table, while also having their language, culture, beliefs, and history stripped away and often beaten out of them, then no, you cannot say the N-word. If you need additional context to what I'm saying, then go read the Willie Lynch letters. It's a very short read and gives a step-by-step -step breakdown of slave owners of the most efficient and sadistic way to make slaves dependent and compliant. And I can't even discuss the horrible tactics that slave owners use because this video will get demonetized. But unless your ancestors were forced to survive in those inhumane conditions for 400 years, with slavery only ending 160 years ago, and then had to deal with overt and systematic racism, segregation, discrimination, redlining, being beaten or lynched for just being black, having to fight for the right to be recognized as 100% human, and having to march and boycott for the right to drink out of the same water fountain as white people, eat in the same restaurants, go to the same schools, live in the same neighborhoods, and vote. Then no, you cannot say the N-word. Unless any of those pertain to you, your family, or ancestors, or they were impacted by the transatlantic slave trade, then I don't want to hear any complaining about you not being able to say the N-word. I feel like it's a derogatory way to use the word, and it's a culture way to use the word. So who can say it to you then? In your friend group, and you chilling, and that's how y'all talk, it's it's just the way of speaking. It's not like you're not coming at them. Like you're not saying that disrespectful. Like, that means anybody if can you're say, not say it. That means that you're saying anybody can say it then. No. Cause if I have my white friend CB, yeah, like, oh, CB come here. and I'm like, yo, CB, 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 come here, CB, CB, come here. Can he say it? And I'm like, CB, like, what's good, my He just coming, you know, something. But that's how we talk. That's not how we talk, that's not how you talk. I feel like bro wasn't specific enough and that's half the issue with who can say it and who can't because certain people let other people say it and it's okay saying it in private settings versus public settings. I feel like it's a responsibility of black people, especially if they have friends from other races, to not let them say it if they shouldn't be saying it and explain the historical context of why. You said specifically that yeah. you guys can talk it out loud. If it's not used in any certain way, then it's fine. Okay, for me, if I did that, like, there's but consequences. But you hear what he said, he said, he said, that's how, he said that's how we talk. That's not how we talk if he can't say it. Now, this is like a politically correct answer, but technically the only people who have a pass to say the word is foundational black Americans. We got to a point where anybody who's black you know, outsiders don't know. Bro right here with the flag up is the whole reason this video is not on YouTube. I had to do more editing on him than anybody else in this video when he got up to talk. Who's foundational, who's from the islands, who's from Africa. So they group us. So we've all used it. Jokingly, I would agree with you. At the same time, I know like society's going to view him as a black man. Like when he gets pulled over by the police, he's going to be a n He is just as black as us to America. I get what he's saying, especially as far as aging, and that's why there's these slippery slopes, but that person also has to identify as black. There were so many places and locations affected by the transatlantic slave trade that there are black people all over the world, but do they identify as black to say that word is a real question, I guess. First and foremost, the word means a non-taxpaying citizen. At that point in time, post-slavery, that word was used towards African Americans. We were described as Negroes when we came off the slave ships because during the transatlantic slave trade through the Caribbean islands, the majority spoke Spanish. And because of that, Negro means what in Spanish? Black. black. So they associated with black. The ignorant version of black means because we were actually non-taxpaying citizens because we weren't considered human beings. Because at the end of the day, we took that word and we made it, strangely enough, out of love. What y'all don't understand about Hispanic people and Spanish people, they just as black as us. Exactly. When you talk about foundational, Puerto Ricans, Brazilians have black ancestry. You don't understand. I'm a teacher right quick. Let me cook. He said he's schooling people, but he's not schooling people. He running around the block. This is where things get spicy and why I think this video isn't on YouTube because those two start getting into it and the N-word is said about 20 times. I find it interesting that at this point, Phantom, who's Dominican, didn't really weigh into, you know, him saying the N-word and why he feels validated to say it or how he was raised saying it or anything like that. I would have really liked to hear his perspective on it because I think he's Dominican and Asian is Ethiopian or something like that. What the only people, hey, the only hey, people my brother, come take a seat real quick. <laughs> take a seat. Come on, bro. It was one group of people <laughs> called <laughs> and that's American slaves. Was you a slave? My ancestors was. How you know? 
What you mean? How I know? How you know? Do you know? Do you know your? Do you know I your do. Limits? Have, what I'm saying is this: that foundational Black American shit. That's some bullshit. I think Bruin the Vest lost his argument a little bit. I could see if he stuck with the fact that, you know, everyone along those transatlantic slave routes were affected by slavery, maybe were called the N-word in one way or another, and they were raised in the environment where it said, I get all that. But then him talking about, were you a slave? How do you know? And then just switching gears to just kind of be an argumentative. Instead of still providing justification to the point he was making, I feel like it's a lost opportunity to really continue educating and having an open discussion on the word. And again, I wish Phantom, who's Dominican, would have really weighed in on this conversation a little bit more. At the end of the day, that's, that's my that personal means, belief. Though. That's what that means. That means you're going to be viewed as a Ethiopian, right? right? One o'clock in the morning. Is my niggas, but I'm saying, <laughs> okay, that's what the word, so you with me, my nigga. The word started, I'm saying, who the word started, started the word with who? With a, group, a specific group of people. There really wasn't a resolution to what either one of them was saying, and I think they both had valid points. Slaves in America were generally called the hard R, and it was black people in America that kind of redefined and cultivated the word to take away some of that hate and use it as a term of endearment. So I do get the point that uh, Bro and the White was making, but Bro and the Best did have a point about other cultures being affected by the transatlantic slave trade and why they say it. So I wish that would have been fleshed out a little bit more, but it was still a good discussion. a and says, in a relationship, a man should pay 100% of the bills. This is going to be interesting. I think you guys are trying to paint this with a black and white brush, and it's not that simple. So my husband and I went through graduate school together. We were both poor, so we both were financially in the same place. Right. So we split rent, we split everything, even after we were married. I feel like that's how a lot of people that went to college, met in college, or in around that college age are. They kind of were broke together, came up together, started working together, built their lives together. So they either pay half of bills or different percentages of bills. But I don't think it's that common for a man just to pay everything and a woman pay nothing. I think it's also about where you are in life. Like if you're in a position as a man where you're making six figures and you meet somebody, get in a relationship and you're already taking care of all the household bills and everything like that. And they can just slide in there, maybe pay a utility bill here or there or whatever. And it's not a big deal. Then I get that. But I personally don't feel like a man should be obligated to pay 100% of the bills, especially not if a woman is working, earning good income, and can't contribute to the household because it's a team effort. I'm the man, right? And I should be, you know, uh, taking care of my household 100%. However, I think that if in a scenario that I'm not able to, my partner should catch me on the way down because I know how life works. Your team. I think the interesting thing about like this panel and this whole discussion is the way A&P views things. Again, these are young millionaires. By the time they meet somebody, of course they're going to be paying 100% of the bills because they can afford to do it. But for most people, most men in relationships, they're not at a place, at least not starting out, where they can afford to pay 100% of the bills. That person at that younger age more than likely is not going to be able to pay 100% of anything. As a black woman who dates primarily black men, I think that we should start paying attention to how, not all, but a lot of black men don't make as much as a lot of black women. I'm one of the women that probably makes six figures compared to a lot of black men that I've dated. You single now? Huh? <laughs> no, no, my bad. Go ahead. The thing is, I'm not opposed to dating someone who makes less than me. The men I've come across that have dated are intimidated by what I make, and it becomes an issue. How did your ex-partner make you feel like uh, it wasn't being appreciated? What was he doing? We're not going out or if we're not necessarily seeing each other constantly like we were, and it's a money issue, then yeah, you would bring it up. I think as a man, you should take care of your girl. You know what I'm saying? I think you should take her on, take her on nice dates. I agree. Take her on nice trips. If you can, pay for her nails. Girl, call just broke that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, whatever you need. Hey, so wait, no, she get a new car. It. New car crazy. If you got it, why not? As a man, I know it's about pride and shit like that, but Phantom asked you about the new car. Yeah. You said, I agree. If you're in a relationship with somebody and you can do stuff for them, you should. Dates, hair, nails, whatever. But I don't think it should be an obligation either in order to be in a relationship or date somebody. Flip it. You broke. And your girl trying to buy you a car. You I said, would, it. I would want her to reciprocate that same energy. Depends on what stage of a relationship you're in with a woman. If you're just strictly dating, then you do what you do. You pay for dinner, things like that, basic transactions. Yep. But you don't pay her rent, you don't pay her car. No, she doesn't probably even live with you at that point. Right. right. But I still believe that a woman should partake. If you're young enough, you both are working, you're building for the greater good, your retirement, everything down the road, your children, if they go to college or not, 
that's what your bones are working for. But if I am doing 100%, if I chose to do that, I think a woman should still have shit going on financially. Absolutely. I appreciate the last guy's response. I think they did a really good job putting this discussion group together because it really covered all ages. And you could just kind of see the maturity and life experience of him saying that both parties in the relationship should be contributing not only to like household bills, utilities, that type of stuff, but to retirement and planning for the future for kids and everything else. I do think that was like a great response. So all in all, I thought this panel and video was really dope. I think it was a great concept. I think it was well executed. I had to cut out a lot of the arguing and yelling over each other parts because that happened throughout the video. But I think it was a great video and great discussions all the way around. Maybe they'll do some editing, cut out some stuff and get this video put on YouTube. But if not, it's over there on their Twitter where I watched it. Either way, thanks for watching. Y'all let me know what you think about all this in the comments. Also, make sure you check out the next video and I'll catch you next time. Peace.